I think what distinguishes anarchist education, if there is such a thing, I think it's important to, to bear in mind that there isn't one such thing. It's not that there is a kind of, you know, standard form of anarchist education. There are lots of schools and educational initiatives and various informal educational projects that are anarchist in some sense or another and they don't all conform to the same model, which is as it should be. But, but there are distinctive features of anarchist schools that I think set them apart from um, libertarian schools such as Summerhill, for example, or other famous examples of uh, so-called democratic or free schools. Um, and the, one of the features that, that I found looking at historical examples is, is that although some of the earliest educators who set up such experiments and were involved in the anarchist movement were to an extent libertarian. Anarchist education is generally not libertarian um, in an important sense, and that is that uh, people like A.S. Neal subscribe to the idea that nobody has the moral right to tell children what to believe, what values to hold, what to think, um, that children have to determine their own morality, their own values. Um, and that's a, a sort of very strong commitment of people involved in, in strictly sort of libertarian education. Now, anarchist educators like Francesco Ferrer, um, Emma Goldman, people involved in the anarchist school movement in the States, they didn't think that that was true for a minute. Um, they didn't think that children should be just allowed to sort of grow up in some romantic ideal where they'd form their own values. Um, they thought there was a particular set of substantive values that were worth passing on and teaching people about and that they were better than the set of values that was being presented to people in mainstream schools. That's why they wanted to set up anarchist schools. Um, so they were under no illusions that there could be such thing as a, a neutral curriculum or a school that wasn't somehow committed to a particular... Um, moral position or political position. And I think that's, that's an important point to remember. Um, it also calls into question the extent to which the, the pedagogical practices of these schools were really libertarian. And I think there are a lot of tensions around that, actually. Um, and some contradictions even within the writings of anarchist educational theorists. So, Francisco Ferrer, for example, in his prospectus for the school, which he opened in Barcelona at the beginning of the 20th century, he says, I, I will not ram dogmas into the children's heads. I will teach them not what to think, but how to think. And yet, if you look at what he taught, and what, more importantly, what he didn't teach at the school, um, there was a clearly substantive curriculum um, and a substantive set of values underpinning what went on in the classroom.